Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The Eric Erickson Show across the nation. The phone number is 877-973-7425, should you wish to be on the program. The margarita recipe is in the wild. Uh, You can text the word recipe to 33777 uh, and just enjoy yourself. Now, let's see. Um, What is this? Um, ah, Okay, so um, Mr. Swain emailing. uh, Text the word data to 33777. Text the word data to 33777, and I will send you back my list of candidates in Georgia that I supported, voted for, or otherwise would if I was in their area. Um, It's the word data, not the word list. Okay, now we got to move on. Uh, There are a number of other stories out there, one of which hit the wires a short time ago that the Biden administration has decided to get rid of its uh, office of propaganda. The Biden administration, and uh, by the way, you should know that uh, there are some members of the Biden administration who really aren't sure who came up with the idea. And I don't think it's one of those, it wasn't me, don't blame me sort of things. I think some of these people really had no idea. Uh, When Jen Psaki was asked about that, uh, Nina, what's her name, who was put in charge of it, she had no idea, didn't know anything about it. Uh, and reporters who I've talked to said, yeah, they absolutely, this was announced out of the blue. Nobody was prepared for it. They're not sure exactly how it happened. And now it's dead. Uh, they have killed the disinformation office. They're claiming uh, the Washington post is making it a pity party for Nina. What's her name? Jankowitz or whatever. This woman used to write erotic fan fiction about wanting to sleep with Harry Potter. That should tell you everything you need to know about this woman. She also advanced disinformation. Uh, Nina Jankowitz, the the or whatever her name was, the head of the Office of Disinformation, uh, actually believed that the Hunter Biden stuff was Russian disinformation, and she believed the Steele dossier, which was Russian disinformation. Uh, this idiot wanted to be in charge of trying to tell us what was true and what was not. Uh, She was completely incompetent and unqualified. Uh, From what I could gather, her her parents were big donors within the party and decided and they needed to save her from her career in theater. And so she got this job. She was some fellow at some uh, sort of think tank or something. Um, Well, she's out of a job now. They're killing it. It was a terrible idea to begin with. Whoever thought it was a good idea was absurd. And by the way, Precedent matters on this. Precedent matters on this. If you're going to start an office of disinformation, the point of which is to tell people what is true and not in the media, do you really want the Republicans to have that office? If you're a Democrat, do you really want future President Ron DeSantis to put Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene in charge of the Office of Disinformation to tell the American public what is real and what is not, what is a lie and what is true. Do you do you really want to do that? Because this is what's at stake. The precedent of this sort of stuff matters. It's why it was a terrible idea. You should not want the government to have an office of disinformation telling people what is true and what is false. It's what the free market is supposed to be for. In fact, there's an alarming trend on the left to want to silence other people, to want to shut down the views they disagree with that they claim are not true. And think of all of the stuff they said wasn't true that turned out to be true. Just think about the COVID information. 
over time, the science evolved and the virus evolved. And things that had been true early on no longer were. It didn't apply. Rachel Maddow went on an entire monologue one night about how if you get this vaccine, you will not get COVID. Is that disinformation or misinformation? Because it's certainly not true. You absolutely can get COVID. My wife got COVID. She got the vaccine. And I'm glad she got the vaccine. And there are people on the other side who say they can't understand why you're glad you got a vaccine if you still got COVID. Because my wife has lung cancer. And if she hadn't had the vaccine, she probably would have died. It minimized the effects of the virus. There are real reasons there to get the vaccine. But there's a lot of misinformation and disinformation on both sides, not just one side. Not just one side. Do you want the government to be involved in that? It reminds me of the Obama administration. They hired Linda Douglas, then of ABC News, another partisan hack embedded within the media that moved into the Obama White House, exposing herself for the liberal we already knew she was. And she ran some office of disinformation, I forget what they call it, on Obamacare, encouraging you to report your friends if they lied about Obamacare. Forward the email chains and they'll debunk them. The media thought it was awesome. You know, she's now back in the media at the Atlantic. Or was for some time in an executive role there. It's amazing, the open door, revolving door between Democratic offices and the press. Yeah, there, it occasionally happens on the right. It occasionally happens, but it's a rare thing compared to the Democrats. Uh, you, you had Jay Carney was the uh, Time Magazine White House correspondent, became Obama's press, started off as Joe Biden's press secretary. He was replaced in Joe Biden's office by Shyla Murray, who was at the uh, Washington Post. Her husband, Neil King, who was a reporter for the Washington or Wall Street Journal, he's over at Fusion GPS now the left-wing group that came up with the Steele dossier. It's amazing the revolving door between Democrats and the press. And you're going to let those people tell you what's true or not. And then watch what happens when Republicans get in charge and they have an absolute meltdown. The Democrats do that. Oh, my gosh, we're allowing Republicans to, to have an office of disinformation. Well, you're the people who started it. The precedents matter. This is one of my great frustrations of Washington and the politics of the day is that neither side is very thoughtful about the precedents they're setting. You used to have both sides decide, I'm not going to do this because I don't want the other side to do it. And now they're both like, screw it. They'll never take office again. And guess what? There's no such thing as permanence in politics. Eventually, the other side takes over and they use all the precedents you had and then some. You think if you're on the left, January 6th came out of nowhere. You think January 6th was an affront to American democracy. I'm old enough to remember Stacey Abrams of Georgia refusing to concede defeat, claiming she actually won. And Hillary Clinton and a whole bunch of other Democrats backed her up on that. You, you think January 6th came out of nowhere? I, I'm old enough to remember Democrats rioting in the streets over George Floyd. Hell, I'm old enough to remember Democrats rioting from George W. Bush's election in, in 2000, saying he was he was selected, not elected. Precedents matter. Just because it's an escalation, and January 6th is certainly an escalation, doesn't mean it didn't come from anywhere. I'm old enough to remember the Democrats. Remember, no, the, 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 the fool who was so upset when they announced Donald Trump, president of the United States. And I mean, they went viral. This girl uh, in, in her safety jacket, or the fluorescent jacket with her hands are red. No, no. My apologies to your eardrums. It was painful then to watch that woman. They rioted. They burned a limousine on Pennsylvania Avenue because he got elected. It, the precedent mattered. Those January 6th protesters, they didn't get the idea out of the blue. They saw what the Democrats had done, and they just took it a step further. And God help us, the Democrats are going to take it a step further now. Precedents matter. Neither side ever wants to think about that. Neither side wants to restrain themselves, understanding that the other side's going to do something. It's like the filibuster. The Democrats, to this day, refused to accept it was them 
who got rid of the filibuster and allowed the conservatives to be put on the Supreme Court. Harry Reid and the Democrats got rid of the judicial, uh, the filibuster for judicial nominees and, and executive nominees. And they said only for everyone except the Supreme Court. Well, if you're going to do it for everyone except the Supreme Court, of course the Republicans are just going to finish it off for you. They followed your precedent. To their credit, the Republicans then did not get rid of the legislative filibuster. And the Democrats sure are trying. And, and the Democrats said, well, we're only going to give it an exception for voting rules and civil rights. You do that, the Republicans say, well, we're going to give it an exception for tax cuts and getting rid of things Democrats did previously. And, and you're just going to get rid of it. The Republicans held the line, and they're only holding the line now because of Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema and a couple of Democrats who are too chicken to admit they really don't want to get rid of it. Precedent matters. Precedent matters. It's like the great replacement theory, which we're going to get to. For years, Democrats have said demography is destiny. For years, Democrats have talked about expanding the vote to illegal aliens and non-resident citizens to neutralize Republican votes. For years, the Democrats have been advancing a scheme of open borders to allow illegal immigrants to come into this country, give them amnesty and the right to vote, thinking it would help the Democrats in the future. And now some crazy person has tied it to a racist theory that the Jews are pulling the strings, calling it the Great Replacement Theory. And the Democrats are like, I can't believe anyone would say that. For years, you've been telling us this was your plan. To bring in a bunch of illegal aliens, give them citizenship, and make sure that you had a demographic majority that would stop Republicans. You yourselves are the ones who have been talking about it, not us. And now suddenly you think it's racist to bring it up? Y'all were pretty open about it. Your precedent mattered. Your idea mattered. And what you did is you fostered a bunch of crazy people. Now you're blaming Tucker Carlson and Fox News. You're the ones who are open about what you were going to do. It only took a little bit to twist it. Remember James Hodgkinson? He was a Rachel Maddow fanboy. James Hodgkinson loved Rachel Maddow. You'll notice the media doesn't want to talk about that aspect of it. James Hodgkinson tried to commit the mass assassination of Republican members of Congress, and he was an acolyte of Rachel Maddow. Loved her, loved her show, obsessed about her. You never heard that from the media, but it's true. God's honest truth here. I'm not making it up. But then you listen to him talk about Tucker Carlson and and making him the reason this guy in Buffalo shot things up. You realize how biased the press is. And these sorts of precedents matter too. And how we react to the news, how we respond to the news, how we analyze the news, how we interpret the news. And nobody wants to think about these sorts of things. They're too busy looking for short-term wins to even think about the long-term impact. Democrats for years have been saying they were going to bring in a bunch of illegal immigrants, give them citizenship, and marginalize Republican white voters. And some crazy person has taken it several steps further and committed a mass shooting in Buffalo, New York. He is the guilty party, not Tucker Carlson, not Fox Fox News, nobody but him. Nobody but him. But the Democrats, they never thought that their crazy could lead to that. In the same way, they never thought running ads showing Paul Ryan shoving grandma off a cliff, claiming the Republicans were going to kill people, could embolden crazy. The Democrats always think crazy comes from the right. They ignore it on their own side, and they circle the media wagons and never want to account. They'll blame Tucker Carlson. They won't point out that the guy who tried a mass assassination of Republicans was a Rachel Maddow fan, and he was. The precedents matter here, and they don't care. They don't want you to know, and they've got an entire media operation that'll cover up for them. And for a time, they had a disinformation office they were thinking of growing, but because of ridiculous outrage that was legitimately based on the ridiculousness of the person they put in charge. The Biden administration is now shutting down their office of disinformation before it can even get going. And they will thank themselves when a Republican next takes the white house. 
If you're a regular listener to this podcast, you know I used to have a great business sense and love to invest, and it just got overwhelming, and I've been looking to get back into it, and y'all, I have tried the different companies. Y'all know the companies I'm talking about out there, and I settled on SoFi for a lot of reasons, and now I'm actually happy to tell you about them as a podcast advertiser. I'm happy they came on board because I came on board them before this, and I really like it, and one of the reasons I like it is because it's gotten so complicated with all the jargon out there. you got memes stocks, altcoin, you got shill in for different stocks, you don't know who you can trust. Uh, with SoFi, you can actually get into investing stocks, ETFs, crypto, retirement planning. You get all the IRA options, whether SEP, traditional, or Roth. You don't get commissions on trading stocks and ETFs. You get no account fees or hidden fees. You can use fractional shares that start as low as $5 to buy brand name stocks. Even if you don't have a couple thousand dollars lying around, you can get started for cheap with SoFi putting your money in and watching it grow over time. Now listen, you get hands-on with active investing. You can let SoFi's number one ranked automated investing tool, their robo-advisor, take the stress out of building and managing a diversified portfolio. They've got it all there. It's easy to use. I've been using it. I love the interface. It's intuitive. If I can do it, you can do it. Cut through the jargon. Make investing easy with SoFi. Go to SoFi.com slash Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to learn how you can win up to $1,000 in stock when you open an account. That's SoFi.com slash Eric, S-O-F-I.com slash E-R-I-C-K. Brokerage and active investing products offered through SoFi Securities, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC. Welcome. Delighted to have you. It's Eric Erickson here. Uh, remember, if you text DATA to 33777, not only can you get the list of candidates in Georgia I recommend, but also you can sign up for the daily email. In fact, that story I mentioned earlier about Andy Blunt, the son of uh, Con- or Senator Roy Blunt, working with George Soros's group to stop voter ID laws, it's in there. You can find the link, read the story for yourself. Text DATA to 33777, subscribe, and you get... Really, it's the greatest compilation of news every day that you could possibly get. Uh, And this story, I believe, is in there. Should be, because it's in the show notes. An Indian couple is suing their son and daughter-in-law for not giving them a grandchild. That's right. Uh, From New Delhi, a couple in India, they're suing their son and daughter-in-law for not giving them grandchildren after six years of marriage. Sadhana and Sanjeev Prasad, who live in uh, Haridwar, a city in northern uh, India, filed a petition this month seeking $643,000 American dollars in damages from their 35-year-old son and their 31-year-old wife. In the petition, they say they spent $257,000 raising their son and only child. They raised him, they educated him, made him capable, made him a pilot, which was expensive. They see people in their neighborhood play with their grandchildren. They feel like they should have one. They said they didn't marry their son and daughter-in-law off so they could live alone. They said the next year, either give us a grandchild or give us compensation. What horrible people horrible people and they're upset they paid for their uh son and daughter-in-law's car and for their honeymoon and and they also that they they're going after the daughter-in-law's good gracious so it's a it's a rare lawsuit familial obligations in india there is a legal basis for the claim uh parents can claim a monthly allowance from their adult children under federal law that seeks to protect parents and senior citizens who may not be able to take care of themselves um these are horrible people i am sorry but the idea of a parent suing a kid for a grandkid now i realize it's a different culture but see this is the problem with moral relativism some people will say, well, it may not be acceptable in this country, but in that country, it's uh, par for the course. It's common. It's what people do. No, you don't sue your kids because they haven't given you a grandkid. Go be go be a little aunt and uncle to somebody else or adoptive grandparents. Somebody. Good gracious. I just know that there's, there's nothing acceptable under the sun in any country on earth for people parents to sue their children for failure to provide a grandchild you know what they should do is they should have their grandchild should get pregnant have a kid and then never see them 
That would be pure spite. But at that point, they would deserve it. Good gracious. All right. When we come back, we got to talk about the great replacement theory that the Democrats say only Republicans talk about because somebody I know has put together a montage. The only people who could find talking about the great replacement theory were Democrats. He looked. Even Tucker Carlson has not been so explicit, and they want to blame Tucker Carlson for this stuff. But the Democrats have been talking about this for years, that they're just going to replace all the white people in this country with people who were illegal aliens who they'll give citizenship to, and they'll start voting the right way for the Democrats, except it's not working out that way. Even Hispanic voters are moving towards the GOP, and all they need is a third of the Hispanic vote. And the Democrats in this country will never hold power again. There's new data out there. I'll tell you about that as well when we come back and take your phone calls, 877-973-7425. Welcome back. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. The phone number, 877-973-7425. Let's go to the phones. Tony, welcome to the Eric Erickson Show. How are you? All right. How are you doing? Love your show. Thank you. Um, I got. I just want to say something real quick to, to the Democrats. I'm, I'm a. I'm a black man, and um, I'm speaking for a lot of black people because we do talk and communicate with with each other. And um, this, with Biden going to to um, Buffalo, it it didn't look good. It just like photo ops. Let me just try and take advantage of you know ten dead people so we can use this for maybe we can get some votes. And, 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 and why, why don't he go, him and all these little Democrats, go to Chicago and all these other cities where these children are getting mowed down every weekend and lay some flowers and some wreaths? Do that. It, it, you know, it's just, you know, you got hundreds and hundreds of black people get thousands getting killed every weekend. And don't get me wrong. Uh, it's bad what happened to Buffalo. My heart goes out to all those family members. But if you're going to lay wreaths in those 10, can you also go do for the thousands it looks fake and uh, it's not real, and we know it as black people. We know it's not real. It's for show, and we are catching on. It's not real. Okay, I want to ask you something on Chicago because this is the thing that perplexes me. When when I raise this issue, when other people raise this issue, uh, you suddenly hear uh, Democrats say, well, that that's that's not for your community to talk about. What they mean is white people aren't supposed to talk about all the shootings in Chicago in the black community, and yet I don't hear any black people in Chicago in leadership talking about it either. Well, because he... Uh, the community is, is this whole country. We are all part of the community. Yeah. I'm part of Chicago, just as much as I'm part of California, New York, or anywhere else. We're all one. So, it, it, you know, we should be able to talk about these things. They don't want to talk about it. And it just simply just is all, it ain't look ridiculous. I was really, I felt sick seeing them all standing up in front of the grocery store, putting flowers and talking and everybody taking pictures and stuff. Man, that's, Come on, get that, that's ridiculous. That ain't real. Yeah, look, I, I'm. I, it, it's such a photo opportunity, Tony. I appreciate the phone call very much. And and look, I'm I'm going to get to the great replacement stuff, but Tony makes a point here. When Republicans, conservatives, raise the issue of Chicago, we are told. It's not our business. It's not our place. It's not our community. We're only using it to deflect from other things. In this case, what happened in Buffalo, New York? Awful tragedy, tragic calls for uh, gun control in this country, attacks on Tucker Carlson. There were 33 shootings in Chicago this weekend. Whole lot of people dead there. And when you pointed out the Democrats continuously, constantly deflect it, well, you can't talk about it. It's not your place. You're white. It's a conversation for the black community. I I don't see anybody in leadership, including the mayor of Chicago, who is black, having a conversation about the violence that happens on a daily basis in Chicago. It's like they just think it's accepted, that it's normal. It's the default. They have given up. Gang violence. Young black men killing each other. They have just given up on that community. Is it any wonder there's been a subtle shift in younger black men voting Republican? 
for a group of people who really do want their vote and really don't take them for granted because they need them. They don't have them. They need them. The Democrats, they've just, they, they've started screaming racism about everything. You can't talk about the violence in Chicago or you're a racist. No. What if you actually care and you are concerned about kids in Chicago getting killed? And their solution is always, well, just gun control. No more assault weapons. These kids aren't being killed with long barrel guns. They're being killed with handguns. None of your solutions are about handguns. You'll notice the, the, the little um, three-card Monty they do there. We need gun control. We need to restrict AR, assault rifles, they call them. They're actually, AR stands for Armalite, not for assault rifle. But they call them assault rifle. It's focus grouped and pull tested. We need to keep assault rifles out of the hands of would-be criminals who would engage in these mass shootings. There was a mass shooting in Chicago this weekend. And they were all with handguns. You're not offering solutions there. In fact, you're telling us not to talk about it. The media doesn't cover it. It's become so commonplace. It's not even a news item in the media. Buffalo was awful. It was domestic terrorism. The president was right. He shouldn't be criticized for that. The Democrats should be criticized for trying to blame conservatives and Fox News. If you read the guy's manifesto, it's not quite right. He wasn't a conservative. They didn't like conservatives, didn't like Fox News. But why let facts stand in the way of good effort to vilify your political opponents in an election year where you got to rally as many people as possible and dissuade them from voting Republican. But please, let's not talk about Chicago, you know. Let's not talk about the violence there. It is remarkable to me how an entire nation, our intellectual elite, our social betters, have given up on that city. 33 people shot there this weekend, and hardly anybody's talking about it. And those who do are attacked for daring to point it out. Now, as far as that great replacement theory, the Democrats are blaming the Republicans for it. The Democrats say it's all the Republicans are doing this. I want to play you this montage. You need to hear this. Don't tell me that it is just the right. Don't tell me that it is the the GOP. Don't tell me that it is some right-wing talking point that has no basis in fact. The Democrats themselves are the ones for years who have been open about the fact that they do want to change the demographics of this country and capitalize on the demographics of this country in order to shift the politics of this country. It seems harder and harder. Well, now i got to change the mixer here. Here we go. This is Chuck Schumer starting out to ignore that the echoes of replacement theory and other racially motivated views are increasingly coming out into the open. In a few years, we're going to be a majority brown country. White people will not be the majority in the country anymore. This will be the first generation ever in American history uh, in which whites will be a minority of the generation at some point. As of 2007, every year babies being born in this country, whites now are the minority. In 2044, Uh, Everyone is going to be a minority. As the demographics change, as white people become the minority in the country, which is coming. Demographics is destiny. Demographics is destiny. Demographics is destiny, right? The country is changing. I've been saying it here. Other people have been saying it here for years now, even before Donald Trump. The demographics is destiny. The white population is declining for the first time in history in America, while the number of multiracial Americans have more than doubled. So we live in a country where the demographics are changing. It's becoming less white. Uh, Correct. Okay. You'll be announcing that we're calling the 38 electoral votes of Texas for the Democratic nominee for president. It's changing. It's going to become a purple state and then a blue state because of the demographics, because of the population growth. The growth in Texas has been almost entirely driven by non-white population growth, mostly by Hispanic and Latino population growth. The idea that, um, you know, whites will, will not be the majority I mean, that's it's an exciting transformation of the country. It's an exciting evolution uh, and, you know, progress of our country in many different ways. The white population is declining. It, it was always on the upswing. So that speaks to the beautiful diversity of America. It speaks to um, 
uh, how the, that population, will, the demographics, will weigh in politically. I believe anybody who acts as a replacement is to blame, not for this particular crime, but it's, it's for no purpose, no purpose, except profit and or political benefit. And it's wrong. It's just simply wrong. That's two minutes of Democrats say, well, uh, demography is destiny. White people are on decline in this country. It's, it's going to be a multiracial country. The great replacement theory is twisted by the shooter in Buffalo that a cabal of Jews are in charge of making sure that more non-white people are brought into this country to marginalize and alienate white people and shove them to the sidelines of society. That's not true. It's the whisper of a demon in that person's ear. But since Richard Nixon's reelection in 1972, Democrats have pushed this idea that demography was destiny and white voters ultimately would be on the decline. And sometime years ago, the Democrats decided they could escalate it by allowing illegal aliens into the United States, give them amnesty and citizenship, and build a democratic coalition of the working class and um, a multiracial people. Ray Texera, the, the pollster for the Democrats, wrote a whole book about the coming Democratic majority. It was going to be a coalition of the working class whites, black and Hispanic voters were going to dominate the polls. Well, yes, they are. Turns out, though, it's for the Republicans. It's the Democrats who advance this idea of demography as destiny. And I mean, I had to write a paper on this in college. There's this thing called Lexus Nexus, and it's the internet before the internet. You can go search all the newspapers and magazines of the day. Back in 1972, you start seeing the phrase demography is destiny. Starting the Washington Post and elsewhere, talking about the days of the white voter are coming to an end. Don't worry, Democrats. Surprised by Richard Nixon's reelection. The Republicans are based on white vote support, and it's declining in the country. And for years, Demography is Destiny has been the calling card of all the pundits on television, the racial demographers, the census takers, and the like. And it turns out it's not true. Hispanic voters are shifting to the right. Young black men are shifting to the right. They're shifting to the Republican Party in large part because the Democratic Party is becoming the party of rich white women. And I'm sorry, rich white women. Y'all are kind of obnoxious. The Karens. I'm sorry. I don't mean to insult you. I really don't. But my gosh, uh, the people with the greatest superiority complex in this country, y'all know who it is. It, it, it's, it's the women who tell you how to live your life. And they are all college-educated women who insist you call them doctor because they've got a degree in education, uh, the, the, the Jill Bidens of the world. It's ridiculous. But it is the Democrats who have been advancing this idea, not the Republicans. It is the Democrats who have been bragging about it as part of a campaign strategy for years. And now here comes this nut job in Buffalo, New York, who uses the phrase great replacement theory, which is a phrase Tucker Carlson had mentioned. Suddenly, it's all Tucker Carlson's fault. It's all Fox News' fault. Where would this guy ever get the idea that white people in this country are going to be marginalized at the fringes of society? Well, from Democrats. It's part of their playbook. It is. It's not racist to point it out. All you're doing is quoting the Democrats, who for years have very openly bragged about the fact that as this country became less white, they would begin to dominate, and they would alienate and push white people to the edges of society. Intersectionalism and all of that, the oppressor class of heterosexual white male Christians would finally have their comeuppance. And it turns out that's not the case. And that's what this nut job in Buffalo didn't seem to understand. As this country has diversified, the most alienating force in this country is a college-educated white progressive. And the college-educated white progressives of, of America have done an amazing, remarkable job of turning Union, white working class voters, Hispanic voters, and young black men into Republicans. I just remarkable to see. And you know, 
One of the great groups out there that is helping solidify this and build the coalition, the new coalition of the right, a multifaceted, multi-ethnic, multiracial coalition of conservative voters is a group you know, Patriot Mobile, but they need you as a customer to help them. Uh, with Patriot Mobile, they take a portion of their profits and they give it to the conservative coalition, the pro-lifers, the Second Amendment guys, the veterans, the first responders. They do a great job. Uh, they're getting even better at it, but they need you as a customer to grow their profits so they can grow what they give to the cause. It's a great way to amplify your dollars. And they're Christians, they're conservatives, and they give you good service. They use the same cell towers everybody else uses. So it's not like you're going with somebody who has one cell tower in the country. In fact, if you go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric, you can see their cell coverage. You get data, 5G, voice, you name it. PatriotMobile.com slash Eric. PatriotMobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K. You can save some money with them, too. They give you great discounts. Veteran, first responder, large family with multiple lines. And you can call them. They've got 100% U.S.-based customer service. 972-PATRIOT. Tell them Eric sent you. Get free activation. Hello there. It's Eric Erickson, the phone number, 877-973-7425. Let's go to the phones. Bob, you're going to be up next. Welcome. Hi, well, Eric. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Well, I got a couple comments, and it relates to what you were saying. Okay. Um, people, people are basically all the same. They all want the ability to... Ha- to enjoy their lives, to provide for their family. And regardless of the party, the party that best provides that is going to prevail. And that uh, even Congress, pre-Trump, they lost sight of that. And they've done a lot of legislation where they've ruled by regulations from a bureaucratic organization. And the reality is that people in 2016 saw a different future when Trump came in and he cut through a lot of that and he produced result. They said, Hey, he's given me what I want for my life. And the party that best does that will prevail, whether you call them Democrat or Republican. And I sure as hell hope that the Republicans realize that they ought to go back that route on those policies and limit regulation. Yes. There's a lot of regulations that are stupid if you really understand what they're doing. Well, I mean, look, we look at the, the yeah, Bob, look at the the child, uh, the the baby formula stuff, the regulations involved there where Europeans actually have higher standards for baby formula. But the FDA prohibits its importation. Um, it, it's, you, you get an inferior product in the United States with more additives. Um, but those additives, uh, reduce the expiration. So they last longer on store shelves. And that, that's, that's why a uh, European baby formula does not last as long on a store shelf, but it's has less additives to it. It's absurd. And I mean, uh, the host of regulations in the country, I'll tell you the one that infuriates me is the shower one. God bless Donald Trump for increasing the flow rate of showers in this country. And then dishwashers. It takes two hours. I don't, you know, if you hang on to your dishwasher as long as you can, we did. uh, We kept just fixing and fixing and fixing our old dishwasher until it, it was not fixable. And it could do a fantastic job of cleaning the dishes about an hour. Got a brand new Bosch dishwasher, and it's great, but it takes about two hours and 20 minutes to wash the dishes unless you put it on the the quick cycle and the quick cycle isn't as good. It's absurd and it's because of government regulation. In the name of efficiency's sake, it actually uses more power and runs longer. It's nonsense. Or the, the, the stupid auto start stop on your car. That's government regulation. Or the air pressure um, in your tires, the little sensor light that comes on, and it's it's a government regulation. It has driven up the price of cars, so it's harder and harder for someone who's not wealthy to be able to buy a new car in this country, or even in some cases a used car because of all the government regulations adding to the price. It's nonsensical. It's absurd. It's offensive, and it's government regulation at work. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. 
This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. 